Aero Air Flight 1285 was a McDonnell Douglas DC-8 jetliner that operated as an international charter flight carrying U.S. troops from Cairo, Egypt, to their home base in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, via Cologne, West Germany, and Gander, Canada, on the morning of Thursday, 12 December 1985, shortly after takeoff from Gander en route to Fort Campbell, the aircraft stalled, crashed, and burned about half a mile from the runway, killing all 248 passengers and eight crew members on board. As of 2018, it is the deadliest aviation accident to occur on Canadian soil and the second deadliest of any accident involving a DC-8, behind the crash of Nigeria Airways Flight 21 26 years later. The accident was investigated by the Canadian Aviation Safety Board CASB, which determined the probable cause of the crash was the aircraft's unexpectedly high drag and reduced lift condition, most likely due to ice contamination on the wing's leading edges and upper surfaces, as well as underestimated onboard weight. A minority report stated that the accident could have been caused by an onboard explosion of unknown origin prior to impact, with one of these dissenting investigators later telling a United States Congressional Committee that it was impossible for a thin layer of ice to bring down the aircraft. The dissenting report led to delays in changes to de-icing procedures, with a thin layer of ice causing the deadly crash of Air Ontario Flight 1363 in Canada in 1989. In response to lack of confidence in accident investigations by the CASB, the Government of Canada shut down that board in 1990, replacing it with an independent, multi-modal investigative agency, the Transportation Safety Board of Canada. <laughs> Flight history The aircraft, a McDonnell Douglas DC-863 CF, was chartered to carry U.S. Army personnel, all members of the 101st Airborne Division, back to their base in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. They had completed a six-month deployment in the Sinai, in the Multinational Force and Observers Peacekeeping Mission. The DC-8 involved in the accident registration N950JW had been constructed in 1969, and had been leased to Aero Air by its owner, parent company, International Air Leases. The flight was made up of three legs, with refueling stops in Cologne and Gander. The aircraft departed Cairo at 2035 Coordinated Universal Time on Wednesday, the 11th of December 1985, and arrived at Cologne on Thursday, the 12th of December 1985, at 1:21 Coordinated Universal Time. A new flight crew, consisting of Captain John Griffin and First Officer John Connolly both 45, and Flight Engineer Michael Fowler 48, boarded the aircraft before it departed for Gander at 2.50 Coordinated Universal Time. The aircraft arrived at Gander International Airport at 9.04, where passengers departed the aircraft while the aircraft was refueled. Witnesses reported the flight engineer conducted an external inspection of the aircraft, after which the passengers re boarded the aircraft. The DC 8 began its takeoff roll on runway 22 from the intersection of runway 13 at 10.15 Coordinated Universal Time. It rotated near taxiway A, 51 seconds after brake release, at an airspeed of about 167 kias. Witnesses reported the aircraft showed difficulty gaining altitude after rotation. Airborne, the airspeed reached 172 kias and began to decrease again, causing the DC-8 to descend. 
After crossing the Trans-Canada Highway, located about 900 feet 270 meters from the departure end of runway 22, at a very low altitude, the aircraft's pitch increased and it continued to descend. Witnesses driving on the highway stated that they saw a bright glow emanating from the aircraft before it struck terrain just short of Gander Lake and crashed approximately 3,500 feet. 1,100 meters beyond the departure end of the runway. Flight 1285 broke up, struck an unoccupied building and exploded. This started a fire which increased in severity due to the large amount of fuel on board for the final leg of the flight. All 248 passengers and eight crew aboard the aircraft perished. Topic. Investigation The Canadian Aviation Safety Board CASB investigated the crash, and, under the signature of five of nine board members, found that during its approach toward Gander, precipitation conditions were favourable for the formation of ice on the aircraft's wings. After landing, it continued to be exposed to freezing and frozen precipitation capable of producing roughening on the wing upper surface", in addition to the freezing temperature. They also found that prior to takeoff the aircraft had not been de-iced. The board issued the following probable cause statement in its final report. The Canadian Aviation Safety Board was unable to determine the exact sequence of events which led to this accident. The board believes, however, that the weight of evidence supports the conclusion that, shortly after lift-off, the aircraft experienced an increase in drag and reduction in lift which resulted in a stall at low altitude from which recovery was not possible. The most probable cause of the stall was determined to be ice contamination on the leading edge and upper surface of the wing. Other possible factors such as a loss of thrust from the number 4 engine and inappropriate takeoff reference speeds may have compounded the effects of the contamination. Four of nine members of the CASB dissented, issuing a minority opinion asserting that there was no evidence presented proving that ice had been present on leading edges such as the wings, and the minority report speculated that an in-flight fire that may have resulted from detonations of undetermined origin brought about catastrophic system failures. The report also noted the inadequacy of the data from the antiquated foil tape flight data recorder, which recorded only airspeed, altitude, heading, and vertical acceleration forces. The plane also took off with a non-functioning cockpit area microphone. There were also no steps on any of the standard checklists to test the functionality of the microphone, despite the existence of a button in the cockpit for that sole purpose. The defect went undetected for an indeterminate number of flights leading up to the accident flight, and thus the cockpit voice recorder CVR did not record any useful data. Willard Esty, a former Supreme Court of Canada judge, submitted a review of the CASB report in 1989, ruling that the available evidence did not support either conclusion. As a result, the Canadian public's confidence in the CASB was undermined. The federal government responded by creating the Transportation Safety Board of Canada. <laughs> Aftermath On the day of the crash, responsibility was claimed by Islamic Jihad. The claim was dismissed by the Canadian and U.S. governments soon afterward. According to United Press International, 
Hours after the crash the Islamic Jihad, a Shiite Muslim extremist group, claimed it destroyed the plane to prove its ability to strike at the Americans anywhere. Pentagon and Canadian government officials rejected the claim, made by an anonymous caller to a French news agency in Beirut. All 256 people died 248 U.S. servicemen and eight crew members. As of December 2018, that death toll still constitutes the deadliest plane crash in Canada, and the United States Army's single deadliest air crash in peacetime. Of the 248 servicemen, all but 12 were members of 101st Airborne Division air assault, most of whom were from the 3D Battalion, 502nd Infantry, 11 were from other forces command units, and one was an agent from the Criminal Investigations Command CID, a memorial to the 256 victims at the crash site overlooks Gander Lake, and another memorial was erected at Fort Campbell. There is also a memorial park in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, just north of Fort Campbell. As of 2018, the scar from the crash is still very visible, and can be seen on the ground and in satellite pictures. In 1991, Les Philotas, the CASB board member who told a United States Congressional Committee that it was impossible for a thin layer of ice to bring down the aircraft, published his exhaustive argument for the minority opinion that a possible in flight explosion doomed the aircraft. The dissenting report led to delays in changes to de icing procedures, with a thin layer of ice causing the deadly crash of air. Ontario Flight 1363 in Canada in 1989. In response to lack of confidence in accident investigations by the CASB, the Government of Canada shut down that board in 1990, replacing it with an independent, multi-modal investigative agency, the Transportation Safety Board of Canada. In popular culture The television documentary series Mayday featured the Flight 1285 crash and investigation in a season 11 episode titled, Split Decision, which included interviews with accident investigators and a dramatic recreation of the accident. The television series Unsolved Mysteries ran a season 5 episode about the Flight 1285 crash on May 5, 1993, which heavily implied that the crash occurred due to a detonation, fire, or explosion on board the craft. The episode also implied a connection to the Iran-Contra affair. See also Air Ontario Flight 1363, a similar crash due to icing conditions List of accidents and incidents involving commercial aircraft <laughs>